International AIDS Society officials say the death of their colleagues is a serious blow to their annual conference. The president of the International AIDS Society, Francoise Barré-Sinoussi, said several important figures in the AIDS research community were killed. The extent of our loss is hard to comprehend and express. Our colleagues were traveling because of their dedication to bringing an aid to AIDS. We will honor their commitment and keep them in our hearts as we begin our program on Sunday. But the crash has also thrown a conflict in another part of the world into sharp relief. Pro-Russian rebels have in recent months laid siege to eastern Ukraine, a Russian-speaking area, and in June shot down a Ukrainian military plane, killing all 49 people aboard. On Saturday, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said again that he believes Russia-backed separatists shot down the plane, possibly with Russian assistance and equipment. Uh, this is a problem, a very serious problem, and the point I made yesterday, I repeat, uh, Australia takes a very dim view of countries which facilitate the killing of Australians, as you'd expect us to. We take a very, very dim view of this, and the idea that uh, Russia can wash its hands of responsibility uh, because this happened in Ukrainian airspace just does not stand serious scrutiny. Uh, we all know what's happening in the Ukraine. Mr. Abbott called for an independent international investigation into the crash, which killed all 298 people on board, including 28 Australians and three infants. Incoming International Aid Society President Chris Byer said organizers want to honor their fallen colleagues' work. Everyone agreed uh, that the colleagues that we've lost were people who'd committed their lives and their work to HIV AIDS, and they would want this conference to go forward, uh, and that they would want us uh, to have them in our hearts uh, during the conference. That pain is clearly shared by this island nation. On Saturday, Mr. Abbott ordered all flags to fly at half-staff. Anita Powell, VOA News, Melbourne, Australia.